Rista. My name is David Peterson, and this is the Art of Language Invention. Episode 8, Consonant Cluster and Coda Evolution. A little bit ago, I got a question about taking a language that has purely open syllables, so kind of like Hawaiian, and producing a language that has consonant clusters and codas. So essentially, this is your max syllable. So if that's what you start with, how do you get to consonant clusters and codas? Uh, there's actually a ton of different ways to do it, so I'll just go over some of my favorites. Let's start with the easy one, codas. Any language at any point in time can just lop off its final vowels. You never, ever, ever need an excuse to do that. Um, English has done it, in, you know, in the history of English it's happened, it's happened in the history of French, it's happened in the history of Arabic, it's happened in the history of probably lots and lots of languages. There are two ways to go about it. One is just to lop them off wholesale. Uh, the other is to go through a stage where they start out as moving to schwa and then you lose schwa. Now, if you do this, you could produce some fun new homonyms like we have in English, uh, but you can also do something different. For example, you might have uh, palatalization take place before the vowels reduce to schwa and are lost. This will give you a new phonemic contrast and, you know, a new phoneme. That could be fun. And of course, if vowels are becoming schwa, it doesn't necessarily need to affect all vowels. Maybe only non-high vowels become schwa, and then you only lose non-high vowels at the end of a word because you're only losing schwa. Uh, that gives you a little bit of variety. For a Natling example, Japanese only lost high vowels after voiceless consonants at the end of words. That's a much more limited change, so it could be kind of interesting to throw in. And of course, if you have long and short vowels, there's always this handy trick. At the end of a word, long vowels go to short vowels and short vowels disappear. Of course, not in that order. In fact, in exactly the reverse order of that. First, <laughs> first the short vowels go away, then the long vowels get short. Some of these tricks can apply outside of the last syllable of the word, but here's where we need to bring in stress. So depending on where the stress is in the word, different things will happen. The reason that you have to take stress syllables into account is because stress syllables are privileged. They tend to deflect vowel loss, uh, but unstressed syllables are fair game. In addition, wherever the stress is, there are certain syllables that are always uh, privileged or have the opportunity to get special treatment. Those syllables are the first syllable of the word, the last syllable of the word, the pre-tonic syllable, that is the syllable directly before the main stress, and the post-tonic syllable, the syllable directly after the main stress. So, for example, you may lose short vowels in unstressed environments everywhere except for the first syllable of the word, just because. Additionally, consonants may delimit where vowels can appear. Maybe vowels can only disappear between voiceless consonants. Maybe they can only disappear between an obstruent and a liquid. Maybe only between a nasal and an obstruent. Lots of options for you to play with there. Essentially, though, to produce coda consonants or consonant clusters, you have to delete vowels. But uh, luckily, there are plenty of examples from all of the world's languages to give you inspiration. You know, just have fun with it. That's it for this episode. If you have a question you'd like for me to answer on the show, leave a note in the comments or send an email to me at djpquery at gmail.com. If you want to see more videos like this one, feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching.